Willkommen, bienvenue, and welcome back to Let's Learn the Electric Bass with Light. And today, we're going to review rhythm changes, but we're going to do it in a way that will help to get across certain psychological principles that will help you actually study just about anything. The most important of which is encoding variability. I will say that again, encoding variability. And now I'm going to show it on the screen, uh, right about here, encoding variability. And that gives a good demonstration of what encoding variability is. It's much easier to retain something if, when you review it, you don't review it the way you initially learned it, by encoding it different ways, whether shifting from audio to visual, shifting from bottom up to top down, you have different ways of understanding the same thing, and it helps to brush away all of the unimportant things that were part of the original presentation, such that you don't learn it with a bunch of extra noise. For example, have you ever studied something and you can only remember the things in the order that you studied them? You're like, oh, oh, it was the one after that thing. Well, yeah, that's the sort of thing that happens when you don't vary the encoding. You study it all in the same order every time. If it's not presented in that order when you need it, you're not going to remember it nearly as well. So whenever you revisit something, try to revisit it differently. So if you're reviewing your notes, do them backwards. If you're relearning a tune, relearn it a different way, from a different perspective. And that's what we're going to do here today. We're going to go over rhythm changes, which we learned last time, but from a completely different perspective. Instead of looking at the tiny bits and building it from those tiny bits into the whole piece, we're going to look at the whole piece and then work it down into the tiny little details. So, the piece. Well, it's B-flat. So you go from your E to your B flat. Now, I got an awful lot of high end in that. Let's, there we go. Got that nice tritone on that bottom string up to our B flat. B flat is the key. B flat is the tonic. Haven't used that word much, if at all, but the tonic as opposed to the dominant is the home. It's where you start, it's where you end, and in the end, I got rhythm is B flat, or whatever key you happen to be playing it in. You could play it in B. Is that right? Here. You could play it in B, but we're playing it in B flat. You could play it in A. But again, we're playing it in B flat. But it's really boring if you just play B flat. There are very few tunes that just stay on the same note forever and ever and ever and ever. It's really dull. So what we're going to do is take that B flat and ornament it. We're gonna make it fancy. Now. What I'm teaching you today is basically the fundamentals of a type of music theory pioneered by Heinrich Schenker. Schenkerian analysis. If you pioneer something, you can name it after yourself. Or have someone else name it after you, which is even better. Because then you don't look like you have a huge ego, even though you probably do. So by Schenkerian theory, everything is the key. Now, to get into it even deeper, everything is three blind mice. But for now, it's just the key. And then you ornament it. Well, how, how do you make the key fancy? Well, you add dominant to it. So instead of just being B-flat all day long, we add an F to it. B 
because that dominant takes you a little bit away from home, but not really far, and then brings you right back. Okay? But we're not just going to break it into three parts, because three is a really annoying number in a lot of situations. So you've got a couple of choices. You could make it four, you could make it more, but two... Generally, in music, you're going to break it into four parts, because then you can cut it in half, and you can do all sorts of fun things with it. So, once you've broken it into four parts... Well, we've only got three notes. Which gets more, the beginning or the end? Well, that is a question for the composer. Do you really want... And then that just sitting there for a while? Or do you want to go... One to me feels better just holding out that first bit and then going and ending it again choice is up to the composer but in the case of rhythm changes that's exactly what happens you hold the b flat you do some more b flat and then you do f and then you do b flat that's the piece right there we have taken it from the key to something slightly cooler okay but that's still not enough, because it's a long tune. Got a lot of space in there. And then it just keeps going and going and going. And then you do it again. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then you go up. Stays there for quite some time. And then goes back down. That, we can't do that. It's a terrible, terrible plan. So we elaborate each of those things. So you take your B flat and you elaborate it. You take your next B flat and elaborate it. You take that F, you elaborate that, and then you take that last B flat and you elaborate that too. Ornament it, make it interesting. So okay, what do we what do we do with it? So we take our B flat and we've already done the dominant back down. So how about we try doing the subdominant? That seems okay, doesn't it? Because it doesn't have the strength of... Sounds nice. Yeah. So we take each of our B flats. And we replace them with. So that subdominant, which is instead of going up a fifth, you go either down a fifth or up a fourth. Still keeps you nearby. So if you look over at our circle here, we've got our B flat, F B flat, which is dominant, and we've got our E flat, B flat, which is subdominant, right here below it. Okay, so what do we then do with the F? Because the F is feeling kind of lonely. Well, let's give it a dominant. So... You could do the dominant from below, or you could do the dominant from above. So we've got... That's, that's not as many notes as you got from so let's give that dominant a dominant but that's three again we don't like three let's make it four so there we go that sounds nice so we've got our B flat when we go to the F, let's give it a couple dominants. So, 
We've made our way from B flat to a couple of B flats, an F and a B flat. We expand that out again. Doesn't sound very conclusive at the end, so we're clearly not done. And this is also incredibly sped up. Piece needs to take way longer than this. So let's double it again. Twice as long, and then we can just take all of that and repeat it a couple of times. So we want to make that more interesting. So when in doubt, add a dominant. Instead of But then what do we do with this one? Hmm. How about we give that one a dominant too? Everybody gets a dominant. But do we do this? Or do we do... Choice is really up to you, whether you want it to dominant into it or as a dominant afterwards. But in this case, I think taking the dominant into the E flat feels better. So we do the B flat, F, a B flat, F, and then B flat, which was the tonic, now acting as a dominant of E flat. And then let's turn it around and then do B, do the F and then the B flat. So. You follow? So we've got our B flat twice. And then the B flat acts as a dominant for E flat. And then you do F, B flat for that nice dominant motion to finish out that phrase. So it's still just a little fancier. And then you do it again. And then we move on to the bridge. which you could make more fancy if you wanted, but it doesn't really call for it. It doesn't need it, but you could. Instead of doing, you can do, and you could do all sorts of things. You could do, Again, at this point, they're not really necessary. Just having a nice long. Makes for a good bridge. It changes things up from the thing that's going along. Into something that just hangs out. it really helps to differentiate the parts of the piece. But since we learned the first two things, it still works for the fourth thing, because it's A, A, B, A. We just go back to what we did before. Now, this is still not quite the piece we learned last time, because there's a little bit more that keeps getting embellished on that A part, because it's not just It's the whole thing. 
it's so so how did we get here well we had so instead of going we add a dominant to this so And that's still not enough because that's just three things and we don't like just three things. We do four thi four things. So instead of we add a fourth thing. And you remember where that went? Well, instead of it going, it went. So we didn't want to end on that E flat because we didn't want to give it too much focus. So we went farther. And again, don't like the three things. So we do four things. We add the dominant before the dominant before the E flat. So. We have our F, B flat, E flat, A flat. And we're back where we were in the previous episode, where we've got And from there, I had you do this into the bridge, and it just doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. It doesn't really get you to where you're going. So instead of going... There are two options, really. You can do... Or... Uh, that's still not all that great. So you're really, your best bet is just doing B flat, F, B flat, rest, and then you move on. But that's the entire piece again. So let's head on through, see if you can remember the form because it's A, A, B, A, both in the large scale and the small. So here we go. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. Even I make mistakes sometimes. And so what do you do when that happens? Well, you don't stop like I just did, unless you're teaching somebody. You just go to where you were meant to be and make it sound like that was supposed to happen. So one more time, a one, a two, a one, two, three, four. And there you are, all the way around because it had two of those at the beginning, then the bridge, then that last ending bit. It doesn't sound particularly final because we didn't do anything to make it feel final. That's a musicianship thing that is outside the scope of doing these changes because you could, instead of ending there, 
head back to the top again. And repeat over and over and over and over again, because that first time you're playing the melody, the next time someone could be soloing, doing all sorts of fun things. It could even be you. We'll get to that later after we get to scales, but eventually you could solo on this instrument. It can be a nice melodic solo instrument. But do you see how approaching this same exact piece from the top down instead of the bottom up gives you a different way of thinking about how it really works. So you get a broader sense of what's going on and a different way of remembering it. Because you noticed in the previous episode, I had a little bit of difficulty remembering which part came where. Well, it was because I only learned it the one way, and if you don't follow it through that same way, things start to fall apart a little bit. But hopefully, encoding variability is going to work for you for this piece and for all of the others. And I hope you also appreciate that I'm having you memorize things instead of reading them. Yes, I will eventually teach you how to read music, how to read chord symbols, how to read all of that stuff. But personally, memory is more consistent because then you only have to focus on the one thing at a time. And if you can't go you do it slower. And if it's your memory that's faulty, play it as slow as you can remember it. If it's your fingers that are faulty, play it as slow as your fingers can handle it. Because you're at your level, I'm at my level, I might be lower than you. So you can take it even faster than me and add a whole bunch of... A lot of extra ornamentation on top, because this Shankarian approach says you might not even want to stop there. You might want to ornament... You might want to ornament all of that stuff a whole lot too. But just remember what's underneath. Because that's what's important. It still needs to be clear that that's what's going on when you ornament it. But that's all for this episode. If you've got a tune that you would love to learn the accompaniment for, you want to learn the changes, feel free to leave it down in the comments section. I would love to get through all of the pieces that you want to know. But until then, I will see you in the next episode of Let's Learn the Electric Bass with Light.